Neck throughs, guitars, they're like a guy that won't have a beer with you. I want to hear what's pushing the notes. Freddie King and B.B. King, Albert King, and let's not forget Burger King. I don't want to blow my knuckle out. Stainless steel is the work of the devil. These go to 11. From the East Amplification Tone Labs in Baltimore, Maryland, it's the Amps and Axes Show. With your hosts, Jeff the Godfather of Low Wattage Amps Bober and Mick Marcellino. Put on it. How does that look on your tag? <laughs> your license. Oh, I don't have a look. I don't know. <laughs> well, good day to you, Mr. Bober. Good day to you, Mr. Marcellino. We were oh. just cutting up about, you know, going to uh, 11 and 12 and infinity and. Well, I mean, on your license, it says uh, Jeff the Godfather oh, of right. Low Wattage Amps Bober. Oh, that, yeah. How do you it's... sign your checks? Do you have to use two lines? Yes, I, I do have to use two lines. Yeah, it, it, you know, and yeah, on, on the license, it actually folds over to the back. I was going to say, you and know. you have to put the quotes in there. Yes, 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 because that's the way it that's, was given to me. So, well, you know. at least it's on the website that way, right? Uh, I you know, must replicate what's out there. So, you know. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening. If you're listening. yeah, <laughs> if you're still listening, thanks. <laughs> awesome, we are rolling. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank you uh, once again for listening. Uh, thanks for following us on Twitter. I'm now pushing Instagram because the Instagram goes to Twitter, Twitter goes to Facebook, and everybody's fat and happy. You're just pushing that everywhere, aren't I you? I just want to push it as many places. So That's I'm right. going to be coming up with some cool things, and um, we're going to have some changes on the websites. But one of the changes on the website is the old Amazon banner. If you know this holidays are coming up, you need strings, you need shit, just click on the banner. Right. Bookmark it. I know I will because I buy stuff all the time. And then when you buy, you're going to kick a little bit to us, but it doesn't cost you any more. That's right. You get the awesome Amazon deals. That's right. And maybe a drone will drop it at your front door, you know? Yeah. And then if it's a gun, you can shoot it on the way back. (laughs) Wow. Then just, that's just going to make your next delivery late. Just a little bit. You know, just a little bit. But you will be the first guy to shoot down a drone. (laughs) <laughs> at least in this country yeah. at least in this country yeah exactly. so i don't know well, I, don't, I don't even know where to go with that. i don't know we're uh, getting giddy that's yeah. the problem a little, yeah, little punch true. drunk so i was uh i was perusing premiere the other day and thank uh, you premiere guitar yeah i mean actually this is one I've, I've had for a while but sometimes i don't get to read them cover to cover um all the time um very cool article in here about uh it's titled undervalued gear hmm. and it it pits a um uh, a Fender Tweed Champ, which, you know, everybody knows that Clapton made famous in the studio and all uh-huh. this other kind of stuff. Um, I, I don't want to say pits. Um, it compares a Fender Tweed Champ to uh, a Gibson GA5, which, you know, they were both made around the same time. They're both about the same size. Um, and the GA5 goes they, for a boatload less. <laughs> considerably less. Yes. You know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars less. Yes. Um, and it was it was really cool. I mean, honestly, I, I, I do have to admit that I really didn't pick up on this early on in, in my career of working on everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but honestly, I, I didn't see a whole lot of GA5s because not a lot of people were buying them because they really weren't collectible they're still not collectible which is a very good thing yeah um but i didn't see a lot of them come through for repair because i don't think a lot of people were paying a lot of attention to them you know so yeah i was seeing tweet champs but not ga5s uh so when they were getting ready to do this article um the uh, the people at premiere uh contacted me they went could you just take a look at this real quick? You know, you're the amp guy. Could you just take a look at this article? You know, the, <laughs> could you look at this? <laughs> I, well, yeah, and and it's like you know, I mean, the um, you're the amp guy. <laughs> I mean, the, the article was being written by uh, uh, Peter Goldenthal, and I, you know, they went, okay, you're the you're the amp guy. We just want to make sure that everything in the article is is cool. And I went, all right, sure, no problem. Um, so they, you know, they sent me what was uh, the the preliminary article, and they sent me. 
um, I said, you got to send the schematics if I'm going to really look at this. So they sent me the schematics that they were given for the, uh, the GA5 and the, uh, the Tweed Champ. And I'm looking at these things. And I mean, lo and behold, I'm comparing apples to apples. Really? Yeah. I mean, they are so identical except for minute changes in component values and and they're very very typical values one was kind of like an older type of value like nowadays for a 200 ish k resistor we use 220 k okay but in in a schematic that was done a little bit before that change they would use 250 k mm -hmm. okay not a whole lot of difference so there are minuscule uh changes like they used to call 0.02 capacitors 0.02 nowadays uh for whatever reason it's it's you know a universal 0.022 huh. so very minimal differences but you know uh, other than being drawn by different people i'm looking at the same damn schematic so here you go right if you want to go buy one on ebay the highest priced one is 845 dollars for a for a 1960s gibson skylark ga-5t tube guitar tube amp near mint tremolo clean then they get into the ga5 which is 1960s it's 850 and then it just goes down the line all the way you ready 250 bucks for 1964 and i was gonna say if they're 850 somebody's already caught major wind of this it's probably making its way yeah it uh, is what happens in the classic car thing is that mercedes will have like the sl 500 from or from long ago right like the 1950s but they had like a 300 that nobody wants to buy so the 500 costs 1.2 million and the 300 costs, uh, you know, $165,000. Well, as the value goes up on the five and everybody can't afford the five because now it's and at $3 million. And there's no more to be had. Yeah. Right, right. Well, nobody's got half a million, right. you know, 500 or $5 million to spend on the car. They go to 300 isn't that bad. And mm -hmm. then next thing you know, now the 300's $900,000. Well, so that, I mean, that, same thing it's that scenario here. is more like 70s strats. <laughs> yes <laughs> yes way more like 70 strats yeah, 70 like, strats which you could some of them were bad the, uh, they, they were not good when they were made they're still not good now but the 60s dried up and they went oh the 70s must be worth money so now they're seven thousand dollars right and it's ridiculous <laughs> yeah. it's ridiculous you know uh, well look blackmore played them you know it, it you can still get good sounds out of them, but they're not. Yeah, they're not sixty strats. They're not. They're, they should not be worth what sixty strats are worth. No. So um, to give a little comparison here, okay. um, uh, an original vintage nineteen sixty two pre CBS Fender F five uh, five F one Champ Tweed guitar amplifier thirty three thousand one hundred ninety five dollars. Well, there you go. So and, even at eight hundred, the G A five is a bargain. And on the low end, uh, the low end, uh, an original sixty four um, vintage black. That's blackface. Yes, that's blackface. Uh, okay, so for fifty seven, it's a thousand bucks, and it looks like it was thrown off the back of a truck. That must be a good one. That must be a good one because, yeah, like I be. always say, you know, all the, the the pristine amps, they're pristine for a reason. They, they somebody yeah. put them in a closet or under a bed or something because they didn't really sound good. The really good ones are road hard and hung out wet, man. I mean, yeah, they look like they, they've been through the mill, and those are the ones that sound like a million bucks. They got a handful of those, and they're all in the twelve hundred dollar range. So, you know, look at the Gibson because the Gibsons are. Yeah. You know, the honestly, the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. The Gibson has like an uh, of a, like a six by nine oval speaker in it, where where the Champ has like an eight inch speaker. Yeah, and I saw one guy he put a Raging Cajun ten inch uh, Eminence in in his uh, GA five. Well, there you uh, go. Yeah, so you can obviously change it out, and if it's not really holding value, uh, who cares? Right. Well, <laughs> it's all about tone. It, right, and, and they're <laughs> you know. Well, some of them are close to a thousand, but it's not a thousand dollar amp, you know. It's you, not thirty one fifty ninety five right. either. That's insane. Jesus. Yeah. Wow. So what do you think that thing was new in sixty two? Oh man, I don't even hazard a guess. Because um, your return on investment is insane. Oh, at this point, yeah. And sixty two, that amp probably wasn't even a hundred dollars. Yeah, no, I don't think it, it was it was a, a beginner's amp. It was probably like forty bucks. Yeah, it was it, it was a beginner's amp and 
You couldn't you even know? play with a band with that thing. No, no. A friend of mine but had like a 62, or no, I'm sorry, he had a silver face. I don't know what that would have been. What year would that have been? The late 60s? Uh, well, silver is, is um, after 67, so okay. 68 and onward. Could have been somewhere in that neighborhood, right? And I remember him playing that thing, and I was like, uh, I have farted louder in this amplifier. I have a silver face champ. I do. I mean, everybody should own a champ. They just should, you know. Uh, Mine, they sound great. Mine's, just, in, mine's in my living room. You're not going to tear anybody's head off with it. Oh, no, no, no. See, that's why they're great in the studios. You yeah. Know, you can get huge sound. From I mean, a, a lot of the, a lot of the Stone stuff was recorded with, with Blackface champ. Yeah. You know? It's, it's oh, no. fantastic. I'm not you know? taking away Early from Clapton the... Early Clapton stuff, yeah. Tweed champ. Not taking know? away from the sound, but this is an amp that, you know, was not... It was looked at... It was, it was like a Les Paul Jr., exactly back in the day they, yes you know up until just of recent les paul juniors you could give them away mm -hmm. from the 60s and the 50s and now they're going for five grand yeah yeah they're large money <laughs> yeah they're large, and most of them have headstock repairs because yeah. all those things fall over and a neck that looks like a log as leslie west put it because yes. it was not even really <laughs> it's just a baseball bat cut in half but anyway so then, i'm well. sorry so anyway so you know if if Somewhere in your <clears throat> travels, you find a, a Gibson GA5. And actually, actually, it's actually called the Les Paul amp. It says Les Paul. Oh, get out of GA town. 5. I didn't see that on there, but I yeah, wasn't looking very yeah, close. It's so, uh, but that's not the only Les Paul. They made multiple models with uh, the Les Paul name on them. This is the smallest one they made and the smallest one that, that has the Les Paul name on it. But it says Les Paul. <laughs> at least most of them do, I think. And that's, that's a GA5. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, if you can snatch it up for something that's affordable, you got yourself a little affordable champ there. There you go. And it has the octal uh, preamp tube, uh, yeah. which the the Tweed Champs does do. So it's a it's a um, it's basically a Tweed Champ in uh, sheep's clothing, I guess. You well, know? if we see the price go up, we know we're the reason. True. So, so that's good. Grab them now. Yes. Grab them now. So we have this cool guest coming up. Yeah, we do. I mean, it, and it has nothing to do with vintage, um, but yet uh, another um, another tool in yeah. the guitar arsenal. You know, yeah, from, we we went we're we're going from small amps to small things, <laughs> to small things because this is a small thing that not a lot of people think about. But um, this gentleman did, and uh, is is doing very well, supplying us all with uh, something that is uh, is is letting us execute plucking on a guitar <laughs> string just a little bit differently. Yeah. So. You know, without further ado, let us bring our guest on, Mr. Vinny Smith from VPix. Hey, this is Peter Stroud with Cheryl Crow. You are listening to my good buddies Jeff and Mick on Amps and Axes. All right, so uh, on the line, as promised, we got Mr. Vinny Smith from VPix. How you doing, Vinny? Good. How do you do to both of you? Thank you, thank you. Yeah, Thanks man. for taking the time to be on the show with us. And um, yeah, this is exciting. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> We're excited too. Um, I, I don't know. Where do you start? Uh, uh, how I, did how you, you did you start? Just start this? You know, decided you're just going to make picks, or have you been in the musical industry for quite a while? And this is where you're at now. What's the story of Vinny? Well. I've uh, always been a guitar player. That's all I've ever really wanted to be was a guitar player. Yeah. And grooming myself like every other young man in the 70s to be a guitar player, to be a rock star, whatever I thought I was going to be. <laughs> and um, I used to make, I was very unhappy with guitar picks that were available in those days. And uh, I decided to just attempt to make my own. Oh. Of which I did, and I made them out of a lot of things. I made them out of rocks and metal and coins and wood and a lot of different things. And then my buddy down the street, one of my guitar heroes, his name is Jesse Hampton, he played with a pick called a, a stone pick or a mind pick, they called them back in those days. I remember those. You know, I guess that guy just passed away from, I just found out the other day, I talked to a friend of his, that guy just passed away. But anyway, um, I was kind of checking that thing out, and it was kind of fast kind of weird different than anything i'd ever used before and he really liked it but i didn't i didn't really like that mind pick but i liked the concept behind it and i could see that the way the bevel was that it kind of slipped over the strings real nice and also at the same time i was 
getting kind of fascinated with this stuff that we called plexiglass back then. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, it's cast acrylic. Plexiglass is really just a brand name. I didn't know that, but everything was called plexiglass back then. And, um, so I, I, I found a piece of that, and I started making picks out of it. I don't know. I just like the looks of it because you didn't see a lot of it back in the in the early seventies. And I just started making picks out of that. And by by nineteen eighty, I had pretty much mapped out or shaped out this this thing that I called my guitar pick and um, I used to give them to friends and, and use them myself of course mm-hmm. and um, that's where it started now we actually have a about a year ago we started making a model called the 1980 we, we laser 1980 on it and uh, it's made exactly like the same shape and feel and everything of those picks that I made back in 1980 it's really become a really popular pick that's right and now yeah, when, when you when you did them back in 80 how how did you cut it how did you bevel it what what was the process <laughs> yeah well that's a different story I, <laughs> I i uh only way i knew to cut it was i had like a like a little dremel saw uh, do you know what that is oh sure sure yeah yeah i have yeah one. yeah people a lot of people cut their fingers off with them i hear <laughs> i used to, I used to I had a little template that I made when I finally decided the shape I wanted, which was a symmetrical thing. And I used this Dremel saw. I I, I would mark it out with a Sharpie marker, and then I would use this Dremel saw. And then I would be taking the work. I was in the car business at the time, working in garages and stuff, and I would take it to work, and they'd have these grinders there. And um, I would just take it down and just kind of play with the bevel until I thought I had something that I could gr- I could play with. I, I didn't have a grinder at home. So I lived in a duplex at the time. I didn't have a grinder at the house. I did it all at work. And, and um, so it'd be kind of hit and miss, you know, until I got home and found out if it worked or not. Mm-hmm. And um, that, that's how I did it. That's just over a, a few years of doing that, I I was able to culture this thing and the bevel that I wanted and found out different bevels do different things and different bevels and different thicknesses sound different. So now when you so were, I did and what? I couldn't, I couldn't buff them. I didn't know how to buff them. And I had this kid named Jocko that worked with me and, and he used to clean the shop and he used to take them to school at high school. He had a pla- some sort of a crafting class or shop or something and he would buff it on a, on a wheel, on a buffer wheel for me. He'd make them look really cool. But actually, I liked them better when they weren't buffed. They sounded better, but they looked better when when Jocko <laughs> would buff them on that, they, on that grinder wheel. You could tell the difference in the sound from a buffed and a not buffed pick? <laughs> oh, 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 absolutely. Really? Uh, the, the, the ones that weren't buffed were real scratchy. And um, Oh, in, in, and the surface, stuck- in the surface that um, attacks the string? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, they're okay. real, they're real scratchy, and ah. the other co- the other spot, of course, was buff because I didn't grind on the whole thing. I just ground on the edges, mm-hmm. and all I knew is when they were unbuffed like that, they sounded like Brian May, and, and <laughs> Brian May and Ed King. Those are the guys that I was trying to sound like, and wow. uh, I, they they just had a certain. Well, later on, we found out. Of course, Brian didn't tell us in the seventies, but. In the 80s, Brian told us he was playing with a, a sixpence, which had a little serrated edge around the yes. edge. And, right. And that's why he got that scratchy, that scratchy noise. So I wasn't too far off. And, and Ed King, I met Ed, got to know Ed a couple of years ago. He lives up the street from me here in Nashville now. And he's actually playing my picks. We found out that he played Sweet Home Alabama with a seashell, an actual, an actual big old, about a quarter of an inch thick, uh, triangular seashell. Wow! So really, very far off. You know, he plays wow. my picks now. He re- he retired his seashells. He gave me one. He took a sharpie and marked Ed King on there and gave me one of his retired seashells. And, nice. Uh, and he plays my 1980, and I'm pretty proud of that actually. So you didn't you didn't make a signature seashell sized pick <laughs> like the Ed King signature yeah, model? Yeah, yeah, it's seashell sized. It's about as thick as a seashell. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. Whoa! Nineteen eighty. Oh yeah, I play with. I have picks that are all the way up to half an inch thick. Oh my lord! Wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's, I mean, oh, yeah. I have, I have the Colossal and the Insanity and um, <laughs> just fun names. I, I don't know where I come up with the name because they're, they're insane, I guess. And, and actually, a lot of people that have hand injuries, I didn't design it for that, but, but, I, but a lot of people that have hand injuries play my Insanity. I have one lady in New York. She ran over, she ran over her uh, hand with a snowboard. Mm. But that makes you want to grab your crotch, doesn't it? Mm, whoa. She, she ran over her hand, and my pick is the only pick she's found of everything that she can hold in her hand. She's a doctor. She was in New York. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I imagine if, buy, if you had some... Of them from there. But, then, you know, it's a whole lot easier holding on to a half-inch thick bit than it is a piece of paper. Yeah, and I was going to say. Yeah, when, I, you get, when you got some cloth sticking out of the end of your shirt, you know, you can't hang on to everything with that. So, yeah. yeah but but the, the picks that I play with, <laughs> my personal picks that I love so much are actually four millimeters thick. Wow. You know, which is which is about twice as thick as a quarter. But wow. I also have picks down. You know, not all my V picks are that way. I have picks that actually have some flex in them that go down as as as, as thin as point seven five. Yeah, I've had a few samples, and and the, yeah. they they do. There's some of them that do flex. You know, yes. I mean, personally, right now I play something that's yeah, like a one point one four. Fix to fit everybody. Yeah, and um, the, my personal uh, favorite are the um, picks that are not buff. We call that ghost rim uh, when they're not buff because they have a white edge around them. It's very cool looking, and it gives you a little ghostly whisper to your attack. Nice. <laughs> so that's that, that's what Ed King and Billy Gibbons plays my picks now, and yeah, uh, we've become really pretty good friends actually. And Billy plays my my ghost rim picks as well. So he gave up Billy the he, my, he gave uh, up the peso, picture. huh? <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, I have one of his pesos. I have it right here, and uh, he he gave he gave his, uh, he had three of them in his wallet. And um, the other day, he opened up his wallet. We were at lunch. He opened up his wallet and gave me one of the pesos. And I, I said, "Well, I guess I broke you of that habit, didn't I?" He said, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you did." And uh, so he he gave me one of the three that he had. That's in very his cool. Pocket. That <laughs> you know, is and awesome. I cherished the thing. I I took it. I went down to the Dallas Guitar Show last week, and I showed that thing to about as many people as I could. You know. <laughs> I would too. I yeah. would too. Now you you mentioned um, Brian May early on, like you, you know you were a fan of his. I was I was curious, like what kind of guitar player were you? What style were you when you decided that a normal pick wasn't what you liked? I mean, were you a jazz guy? Were you a rock guy? Uh, I've always been a rock guy with a bit of country mixed in. Oh. Um, I, I always liked. Well, my two favorite guitar players for many years were Alvin Lee from 10 years after mm -hmm, and yeah. Carlos Santana ah. well, because I, I was a big Woodstock fan and I wasn't old enough to go to Woodstock but uh, if I was old enough I had probably been a hippie down there in Woodstock in the mud with the rest of them but those are my two favorites was Albert Lee, yeah. Alvin Lee and, and Jimmy and then um, so I, I was doing that and then, but my buddy turned me on to the Allman Brothers and I really got into the Allman Brothers really early in life and that's where that country thing kind of came from I think that bluesy country thing, because hmm. you know yeah. English people English people play blues a lot different than uh, than Americans do. You know, oh yeah, English yeah. people English people play a lot of major thirds, and American blues players play a lot of minor thirds. That's kind of your, that's kind of the difference, really, if you think about it. Yeah. Um, and so I got that mi that major third thing going in there, and and then about in seventy two or seventy four, somewhere around there, I got a. I started listening to this band called Humble Pie, and mm. they had this they had this little guitar player named Peter Frampton. And, mm -hmm. uh, I started listening to him and try to do everything that Peter does. And um, uh, yeah, I even bought a black Les Paul and everything, you know. <laughs> and I, I guess every kid in America did back back then. Though. And, well, if you um, could, <laughs> so that's, yeah. a little a little bit of jazz kind of creeped in, man. And then I got to know this guy named Robin Ford uh, uh, mm. <laughs> through, through some sound people that I knew. And so I started really, really getting into Robin Ford people. Of course, the jazz, the jazz blues really 
really crept in then. Oh yeah, so, yeah. yeah. a little bit. Oh, I'm just, I'm just a mess. I <laughs> producers producers don't know what to do with me because I'll write songs that are just all over the road, and and they, I put three records out and they didn't know what to do with any of the three because they were so eclectic. Well, that's and, that's uh, off. That's awesome that you can be so eclectic that even nowadays they can't categorize you because there's a million yeah. different categories and if yeah. they can't find one for you that's eclectic my friend they, they, they did they, they they put me in remember when tower records were still were oh, still around sure yeah. they did a, they did a deal with tower records they put one of my one of my records in tower records and they didn't even know what category <laughs> to put it in other <laughs> other that's yeah. right it was it was another, and it was produced by a lot of the same people that produced Carlos's record at the same time, and it was supposed to follow on the wave that Carlos's record did, and his record sold about, what, three billion copies of Supernatural, <laughs> and I, I think mine sold about 30 copies. Wow. So I did, I did about 25 more records than I thought I was going to sell. <laughs> You know, hey, that's it, that's it, success, that was man. Rock, that was my rock career. It was a, it was in the thrash jazz section. <laughs> so thrash jazz. It's a, it's a good thing I learned how to make guitar picks. Let's just <laughs> can one still find your record out there? Yeah, it's on it's on my one of them is on my uh, website. It's called Sir Some Corda. Uh, my 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 my. Um, producer my executive producer who is also my manager he named it it means um it, it, the, the the catholic priests uh say it i guess before the mass it means lift up your spirit ah. hmm. let, let the celebration begin lift up your spirit that's what it means sir some corda so it is a good record i like it um my wife likes it i it's all that matters i guess uh, <laughs> but we well, sell, uh, I, I think i sold more off my website since I've been selling picks and we did the whole career and power record. And stuff. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, yeah, and you're supposed to play for your own soul. Yeah. You know, you're supposed to play for yourself. Yeah. So that's good. You, you know? do, and you do, and I play. I play for my dogs at night. You know, I play. For, <laughs> well, Vinny, like, I got three, three great Danes. They all gather around me, and, and they do seriously. That's and, awesome. And, uh, and I, I play for those guys. I play a little three thirty-five now. Oh, three thirty-nine. Nice. Well, three well, thirty-nine. Play for my dogs. So, well, well, I don't Vinny, care what people want to hear because I'm playing what I want to hear. Yeah. Well, Vinny, Vinny, you got one better to me because my wife hates my album <laughs> and, and i say that with but what about the dogs what about the dogs do the, the dogs like it? the dogs look at me like i'm they, another, another dogs planet. haven't really taught the dogs really haven't told me what they think <laughs> they don't get up they only the only time they get up and leave is when one of them farts <laughs> and then they get up and walk out of the room other than that oh they're pretty good about yeah it. i got one of those too but, <laughs> I have to think Tower Records. I don't really think cared much for it. They sure never invited me for one of those record signings. So, wow, it's probably a clue. <laughs> it's all instrumental, though. It's not all instrumental. We had we had some. Um, you know, they wouldn't even let me sing on my own record. Um, <laughs> they because Carlos was putting out that Supernatural, and mm -hmm. I don't know if it was Five Davis that gave him the advice or what, but. You know, he had all those different singers, so oh, yeah. they put different singers on my record. We had Scotty Haskell. She's the lady that sang the Candid Camera theme at the time, and we had one of the singers from Toto was on there, and wow. one of the guys from uh, Ray Charles was on there. And we wow. were going to put, we were going to ask Michael McDonald to be on the record because he was a real good friend of my producers, but he wanted like twenty five thousand dollars for the session and and wow. uh, wanted some publisher fees, so. Wow. I put my producer's packet where the sun don't shine on that. <laughs> it wouldn't just do it and trade for some picks or, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went $25,000 yeah, worth of picks. Now, are these, wow. are these made out of acrylic? Oh, we're back to picks. These now. are yeah. made out of, there's eight different grades of cast acrylic. Okay. And um, not all, believe it or not, they all look exactly the same, but... They don't smell the same when you're when you're grinding them on the grinder. They don't feel the same. They don't sound the same going over a string. Mm. So I found two out of the eight grades that I like, and then I have them pour that formula for me, and that's what I make my picks out of. I get it in big sheets. That is so cool. They pour them into big sheets for me, and then I, I, I cut them into 12 by 18s. I stick them in the laser, 
they laser them out to shape and it puts the logo on them and then we put them on a bench grinder and then we um we grind them to uh to uh, perfection to make them play <laughs> and then we um then we buff them with 5000 degree heat wow so you there you exactly. have hands on for every pick that goes out of there yes wow yes. well wow. Yeah. some some of some of some of them <clears throat> when a pick sells like 1,500 to 2,000 picks a month, that's a little more than we can handle. So when a pick proves itself to be that popular, then we have a mold made for that pick. And then then the beveling work is done already, but we still have to hand trim it and hand clean it up with razor knives. Wow. So yeah, every single pick that goes out of this place is hand done one way or another. Some more so than others. So, so the price on your website is per pick. Is that correct? That's or, correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they start okay. at four dollars per pick. The colored ones are usually five, and then it goes up. Um, it, it goes up according to how much work it takes us. Actually, mm-hmm. we have it actually timed how how long every pick will 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 have an employee. There's a few of us here now. I don't do it by myself anymore because it just got so big. We send out we we send out about a hundred thousand picks a year now. Wow! Per year. Wow! That's, yeah, a uh, hundred thousand yeah. picks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We we send out anywhere from eight, to, uh, eight. Well, probably seven to ten thousand picks a month. Yeah, we send them all over the world. We're sending them to a hundred and one countries. Okay, uh, wow. I'm I'm doing a little math here, doing a little math. Uh, that's a pretty good <laughs> amount. That's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a chunk that's, of change. That's there. Uh, that's comfortable. But, uh, and these, <laughs> I, I've I've played some of these. I, I have yeah, some so samples. Have I. Of they're these. awesome. Yeah, they're great picks. And I, you know, no, I, I can't I can't tell you I can't tell you that I sell all of them for four bucks because, like, for instance, when I send, let's say, Japan orders a eight thousand or ten thousand dollars worth from me. Um, that's going to be wholesale. Of course. Oh, of course. Wholesale, wholesale is half price. Right. Yeah. But so, you know, it's so uh, you know the these are not picks that you fling off the stage one after another <laughs> after another. You know, I, when, when I take first, them out to play them, I'm always afraid that I'm going to lose one somewhere. <laughs> you know? Yeah. For, for 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 many reasons. I mean, they, they're costly. That's one reason. And another reason is you don't want to stick one of them in somebody's forehead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's that's probably another good reason not to fling them off the stage. <laughs> now, now, see, I, I have some of the clear ones, but I, with my bad eyes, I have to get some colored ones ah. because I can't see them when, know, they, when they hit the floor. You know, that's all, that's all nonsense. <laughs> and I, I'll tell you why. Um, when, <laughs> would you like to know why? Sure. Yeah, because I can't find them sometimes <laughs> in my because, carpet. <laughs> because when you put a, a blue or a red or a black pick and you're you, you got a couple beers in you and you're playing at joe's down the street mm-hmm. of course he's going to have you on a plywood stage normally that he's painted black right yeah, yeah. well the black picks you're, going. You, yeah you're never going to find those things until you take all the amps off the stage um <laughs> that is true but yeah. one of my picks if you simply stand back the, the clear pick picks up reflection of any kind of light that's in there, whether it's a little neon light or a flashlight. and But you can't find them by looking straight down. You kind of got to like walk walk away a little bit, about four or five feet, and then look back where you were, and then you'll find them. Yep. That's yeah. how you find them. And it's very visible because they, they collect light wonderfully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the other thing I did notice, because I was worried about that, like I was going to drop the pick, that material sticks to your fingers pretty good, even when they're like wet. Yeah. I've noticed that. Yeah, you're not, you're not going to drop them to begin with. Um, I mean, you can drop them if you try to drop them. Don't get me wrong. But um, you're not going to accidentally drop them. And that's one wonderful thing. That's, that's one of the characteristics of the two cast acrylics that I like that I was telling you about. Yeah, I was going to ask yeah. you if that's not one of the of reasons. Them, yeah, when they, when they warm up to your touch... You got to get the pick warmed up. It'll take you about a minute to warm it up. It, it and if you're, you. if you're kind of sweaty, it makes it a little bit better because it has something to do with the perspiration in your fingertip. And I don't, 
I don't really understand it, exactly what it's doing because if you grab the pick with the other hand, it no longer feels tacky. Mm-hmm. But the really? hand that wow. you warmed it up with. That's interesting. I, yeah. I don't know. Hello? It's, it's kind of like oh. when you wear rubber gloves. You know how when you put a pair of rubber gloves on and, and your hands get, it, it brings the moisture out for some reason? Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's what this material does. It, it, it warms up to your touch. And it's almost like it makes your finger prints sweat or something. I don't know. I don't know how it does it. But I never really noticed it, to be honest with you. My customers are the one that gave me the slogan, never drop your pick again. After about four or five people came up to me and told me that that's what my slogan should be, I figured that was a pretty good sign. That's <laughs> nice. Now, you mentioned the, the two different types of acrylic. Um, do you Are your picks made out of two different kinds of acrylic, or do you have a custom blend made out of those two types? And that's, that's what you mean. We, we we blend acrylics here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That is so cool. Yeah. It's, I mean, I ha- and I have to have to kill you if I if I told you what it is. So. No, we don't want to do that. No, I don't. I, I'd rather wake up tomorrow. Yes. There's nobody will hear the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the shows would be more popular than exactly. Yeah, you know, that's right. So, yeah, we'll yeah. be we'll have a million hits. That's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> so, um, Vinny, how long have you been doing the the V pick? Pers- I mean, as as a product that you retail. I mean, I know you've as been making, a business, yes. as a business, we we I started. Well, I started making them back in 1980, but or, the, or maybe even earlier than that. I think earlier than that. Um, but then I I didn't really get serious about making them and giving them to people until 2004, hmm. because I quit playing guitar for a long time. I played saxophone, and hmm. I didn't really tell you that. <laughs> Eddie Van Halen came out and he started doing all that two tap, two handed tapping stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I really did. I really didn't like that stuff, and and so I decided if that's the direction guitar playing was going, I I didn't think I was going to go in that direction. So I sold all my guitars and I bought saxophones. Wow! So mm-hmm. there there was a a long period there where I didn't play guitar, and then once I started playing the guitar again, then I started making them again and. Um, then in 2004, I was sending them out. Now, now we had the internet. You know, now I had buddies all over the world because I was involved in the PRS forum and different guitar forums, right? And I was giving, I was sending them all over the world to my buddies. And and my wife says, um, you, you need to start selling these things. And I go, well, why? She goes, well, you're working all day, and then you come home and you make these picks all night, and. And during the weekends and stuff, you know, I was doing it for a hobby then. I didn't even consider it, so I didn't think anybody would want to buy them. <laughs> and um, wow. so she says, no, no, you, you're going to have to sell them. So I, I put them online, and man, I struck a nerve because they never stopped selling. Wow. And uh, then we, then in 2008, she came up to me and she said, you have to quit your job. I was making $65,000 a year in the car business. So it's, I mean, I wasn't rich, but, you know, a lot of people would love to have a job making $65,000 sure, a year. Sure, yeah, sure. And, um, and so she came up to me and she said, you have to quit your job because it's getting in the way of our business. <laughs> and I, I said, excuse me? You know, what, what did you just say? She says, you have to quit your job. It's wow. time. Wow. And so I gave my notice, and um, man, that was terrifying, but I did it. I imagine that conversation with the boss was probably interesting. So what are you going to be doing? I'm going to be making yeah, picks. Yeah, and my, my <laughs> boss, because I, I really liked that, that boss that I had. His name was Tony. He, he had, I, I was working for, I worked for a lot of people, Mercedes-Benz and all those people, but I was working for Honda at the time. And then he called me, and when he heard, when he got news of that, and he called me in his office, and he he was ready to chew me out, man. And he and he, uh, I was sitting there, and he says, "Well, tell me the story." So I I told him the story, and and then I said, "There's one thing that I was really afraid of, Tony." Though I said, I said, because um, he came over here, his parents hid him from Hitler. They uh, mm-hmm. when he was man, he was like 16. They gave him a hundred dollars. They put him on a boat in Europe. And they said, have a nice life, because, you know, they, they expected Hitler to come through and take over mm. England, you know. They didn't wow. know. So people were sending, just, they just sent him to America, said, have a nice life. 
Wow. And um, but he he came over here with nothing, so that man knows what it is to to, to pick the mound with the chickens, you know. Sure. And um, and he married this gal named Joan. And anyway, I told him I said, you know, the only thing I'm really scared about Tony is is I lose everything that I've worked for all my life. And and so I asked my wife, I go, what are you, what are you going to do if it complete if it's a complete disaster? Because my wife asked me, she goes, what, what is it you're scared of? Tell me what it is you're scared of. And, and I said, well, I'm scared of losing my house, scared of losing where my dogs are going to live, um, scared of losing, and we end up in an apartment. She says, is that it? And I go, well, yeah, that pretty much <laughs> covers it, yeah. Wow. Pretty, and so she says, well, if, that, if we start all over again, then we start all over again. Wow. So I, I told Tony that. I said, uh, I, I, I told him, I said, you know, this, here's the only thing I was afraid of, and here's what Nancy said. And he looked at me, and he said, you know what? You're going to be just fine, because he said, Joan and I had exactly that same conversation. Wow. That's cool. He said, he said so you know what? You're going to do good. Get out of here. Wow. So. <laughs> Not only did yeah, you he, do good in, in your came, pick business. He even you, came to my house on my going away party, that old man did. <laughs> wow. Well, that was nice. Not only did you do good in the pick business, you did good with picking your mate. Because, man, that's a hell of a wife there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. Yeah, I guess I, got, I guess I got lucky on that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for so, sure. So not only does he make picks, but he also makes slides. Really? I yes. make slides. And I tell you what, I'm very proud of this. Billy Gibbons has really latched onto my slides well there um, you go he he says that they bite into the strings real nice and he said because of that he doesn't tend to play sharp he says when you play with a glass slide, i'm a terrible slide player i you give me a slide and i sound like i've fallen on my guitar and can't get up <laughs> I, am, I am awful at playing slide but of course billy's great and he said, when you play with a glass slide, he said, you have to be careful because you can go up and you can play sharp very easily. Oh, yeah. Because that glass slips on the strings so easily. Where he says, mine is acrylic. And I don't get this because it doesn't do it with my picks. It doesn't bite into the string when you're playing a pick. So I don't really know what he means, but he says it bites in the string real nicely. And I've heard this before from people. And he said, therefore, he doesn't have a problem playing sharp with them. It's got more control. I guess wow. it just, yeah, yeah, maybe just maybe it's that heat factor. Yeah, maybe it's got something to do with it when it warms up. Yeah, or... the heat factor could be, and the way it goes across the string because you figure when you're picking, you're not really picking straight, you know, perpendicular to the string. It's 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 almost like a little bit on a forty-five, a little bit. Right, you're sure. almost, you're cutting across. Yeah. it. you're not that's slapping what, down. That's evenly. what gives you're you that. that that's what gives you that almost that violin type sound mm -hmm. sometimes. Exactly. You know, yeah, right? these things have a slow point of release, like a violin bow. That's exactly correct. That's yeah. why the note. That's why when you play with a V pick, your note blooms because of exactly of what, you're, what you're saying right there. Yeah. Wow. So I would think that the slide is now seriously, it's going ninety degrees to the string, mm. right? Because the slide is yeah, laying right, across, right, and right. then you're dragging it up and down, so now you're right on the wraps. I would yeah. imagine that's probably why it digs in a little must bit. Have some, yeah, must have something to do with it. Now, do they when uh, after you uh, use it for a while? I was does it say have durability? Marks? Does it have marks in it? No, not at all. I, I when I when that's I sell crazy. in the stores, when I go into to my wholesale stores, I'll take one and I'll throw it across the room. They just freak out because they think it's a glass slide. Wow. And I throw it across. I crawl, throw it across the floor, and I pick it up, and I hand it to him. I say, "Find the mark on it." Mm. Wow. Yeah, and so, you know how I mean, many it, how many times you drop? Don't get me wrong. But yeah, yeah. Not not very easily. Now, how many times have you dropped a glass slide and watch that thing shatter? You know, you're just like uh, oh. me zero, me zero, because people don't want to hear of me play <laughs> slide. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, don't... I can clear. I can clear a room. Uh, I'm, I'm, a mu I'm a musician. When I play slide, people disappear. Oh my God, that's, that's beautiful. Great. <laughs> now, um, more than one. I don't have any problem with breaking glass slides because I don't own them to begin with. There you go. Actually, actually, wait a minute. I do own one. Derek St. Holmes. You know him from Ted Nugent. Sure. Yes. He was over here a couple months ago. He's a friend of mine. And he, I'm looking at it right now. I have a glass green slide. It's kind of cool looking. But, and it's in this cute little pouch. And I don't know where he bought it, but he brought it over and gave it to me. And uh, 
<laughs> nice. That's, that's like giving a maniac a gun right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is just beautiful. That's too funny. Yeah, he was uh, he was <clears throat> responsible for me getting some samples from you. You guys sent me a, a bunch of samples at one of the guitar shows. Um, Oh, Derek, one, oh, Derek one, was? Yeah, one of the amp shows we were at. Yeah, he said you got to go give Jeff some uh, some samples, and that's where I got my samples from of your picks. Yeah. So thank you. He's a good old. Thank he's you. He's a good old boy. Sometimes he needs to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to sleep. That's funny. <laughs> now you know uh, we also are good friends with Dean Farley. I was just going to say, yeah. And uh, oh, you know, Dean, you know Dean Farley. <laughs> oh yeah, yes, we, we we've do. had him on. He's, he's a friend. Yes, he's been on the show twice. That, is that guy a hoot or what? Oh, Absolutely, he is. I love Dean. He's, he's uh... calls me calls me every evening, every <laughs> evening, and uh, when I take my blood pressure medication, when I'm laying in bed waiting for it to kick in, <laughs> uh, Dean, Dean calls me, or I call Dean, and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when, it kicks, when the ones that kicks in, I'm laying there and I can hear him yelling, "Vinny, Vinny!" in the phone because I've fallen asleep. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, Dean's a great guy. True, well, true story. But we talk about guitars and oh. picks and, you know, strings, of course. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, of yeah. Of course. He, he, he's Dean's a dude. And we, and we have a model called the Farley. Yes. yes. And I tell you what, I think it's getting real popular. Good. Oh, wow. Good. That's good. Yeah, he mentioned yeah. that it was. I'm, I'm really intrigued about the slides, too. i got to check yeah. out these slides. His, his quote, is, uh, Dean's quote, is on the beginning of our show where he says stainless steel is the work That's of the, the work devil. the work of the devil, yeah. <laughs> it is. I agree. You know, I never, I never knew why my guitar tone went to crap in the 80s. I, I could never understand that until I met Dean. Mm -hmm. and yeah, Dean is the man. It's because they couldn't make a nickel strings for, for that time. And, I mean, you... I... I wasn't smart enough to know they were nickel. I, a string was a string to me. Yeah, to most people. You know. Yeah. Who who thought who thought of reading a package and oh I'm only going to play nickel? <laughs> Nobody thought it. Nobody thought it. That's like looking at a quarter and saying oh I'm only going to spend a quarter that's made out of silver and not you know. <laughs> yeah. The same principle, you know. But he taught me that, and, and you know he's absolutely right. When yeah. The '80s came and you couldn't. Boy, the sound just went in the toilet. Your tone did, unless yeah. you liked everything high end. Then it was wonderful. But I was like lots of nice, rich mids. Sure. Yeah. But it, it got to where I couldn't even get that anymore. Maybe that's one another reason I played saxophone. I don't know. Could be. <laughs> well, you know, well, it, that, now he's going to have to come out with an acrylic saxophone read. You know? <laughs> I thought of that. <laughs> I, have, I have thought of. That. Yep. I that's bet. awesome. I oh bet. man, it's gonna be a whole nother formulation of of, of, of Lexan, but you know. Yeah, well, maybe he, I, maybe I'll come up with a hundred different models like I have guitar picks. <laughs> yeah, wow. there is a, there is a ton uh, of guitar. I wanted to say that there's a ton of guitar picks, but he also has uh, pouches that carry them. You know, he's got a wristband. There's a lot of accessories there, oh, cool. but he also has cool. this thing that I, I guess that you use to scuff up the edge of the pick for that one yeah, model yeah. that you have. That's a cool little thing. See, we call. We call our, our our picks that are not buffed. We call those ghost rims. Okay, that are that, not buffed. Yeah, un, unbuffed, unbuffed. I sold them that way for years, and it. I realized I was just really underselling the name. I mean, underselling that that option. Mm -hmm. You know, it was my favorite option, and yet I didn't really make a big deal out of it on the website. So one day I'm thinking about it. Well, how what can I call this thing? Well, the rim and trim. No, edge, no, edge has been used forever. No, rim's a good word. And then I thought, well, what? It's kind of white. It's kind of like white like a ghost. Ah, ghost rim. Bingo. Awesome. As soon as, I said cool. it, as soon as I said it to my wife, she said, yeah, that's it. I walked out in the shop and said it to Alan. And he goes, yeah, that's it. So that's what we called it. And then, and then not long after that, a lot of people call me up and ask me, uh, how do I, because eventually that, that rim does kind of smooth out a little bit with a lot of playing. Okay. And uh, I, I, I've always just taken my picks out to the sidewalk. Like if I'm, a, if I'm at a gig or something, I'll take them and scrape them on the cement mm -hmm. the sidewalk and, and just rough them up again on the edges. And um, so then I finally wised up a little bit after scraping my knuckles a couple times doing that. I, I put a piece of sandpaper on a piece of wood and I used that for a long time my, myself and, 
And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna design a, a, a tool to do that for my customers. That's so cool. So I put it on there, and would you not know that they just started selling immediately? And I sent two of them out today, this morning in the mail. Two well, of them. Nice. You know, now, now, sometimes four a day. Now, so there's a lot of people playing ghost rims out there. Obviously. Uh, now, now obviously these picks last a very long time. Yeah. This material is pretty hardy because, you know, like you said, you throw it across a room and there, nothing really happens to it. So, you know, I guess for the people that are listening, you know, a $4 pick, you'd probably be like, what? But it is handmade. Uh, Absolutely. And, yeah. And and it is very durable. And it's going to, I'm telling you, I've played it. It does heat up. Mm -hmm. It does stick to your hand. And uh, it, I mean, not like glue. No, but, but it, it better than any of the uh regular uh, what what is it vinyl or whatever they make regular picks out i don't yeah. even what is that material do you know vinny i don't know oh there's a lot they're made out of a lot of different things uh delgren polycarbonate okay the, the, yeah they're it, made out of lots and lots of things i, I used to I'll, I'll say it i used the standard dunlop uh tortex whatever they're purple i don't even know what the size mm -hmm. they are and uh well, they get, you know, they, they come with a rough edge, a rough surface to kind of make it grippy. But right. after about four uses, that's a, that's gone. Hmm. My fingers have smoothed that thing right out. Wow. I, hate, I hate to tell you, but that picks for girls. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had an old man, and this is a true story. And Thanks, my, wife, <laughs> my wife up and she'll tell you this is a true story. There's a guy, an old bugger came into the guitar show this weekend. We did the Arlington show down in, down in Texas. Mm -hmm. Um, the Amigo show. And, and an old guy came up and my wife said, have you ever heard of V-Pix? And he reached in his pocket, pulled out a medium pointed, and he says, I've been playing this pick for four years. Wow. It was mm. the only V-Pick that he owned. I said, man, I'm not going to pay off my house with you, am I? <laughs> he, he laughed and laughed. There was a bunch of people standing around my booth. He just laughed and laughed. He goes, yep, one pick. This is all I need. They walked off. That's so crazy. Wouldn't wow. buy another one. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, it's there's there's no planned obsolescence there. Like, so, you know. so I guess I guess my pick is for girls. Yeah, well, <laughs> your, your picks for girls. Uh, yeah, those people down in Arlington, they got deep pockets, arms. I guess, man. Wow. They have what? Deep pockets and short arms. <laughs> <laughs> that, that guy, that guy did anyway. Yeah, that's funny. That's that's, uh, funny. that's a that's a dollar a year so far. Wow. He, he's yeah. uh, he's getting his money's <laughs> worth. Much of the money he's getting out of that money, so I, I hope he loses it tomorrow. <laughs> First right, then, I'm gonna, then he writes me, I'm going to send him a pink one. <laughs> I hope he loses it, was it too. Clear. I hate to tell you this too, bro. It was clear. Oh, well, hey, well, there you go. See, he's obviously he's never lost it on a dark stage either. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, well, well here, here's the thing, Vinny. If he does call you up and says he lost the pick, I'll send you all my girly picks, and you can send those out to him. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll do that. I'll serve him right. That's right. Actually, actually, people bought him like left and right when, as soon as they heard him saying that when he was walking away. Then those people couldn't get their wallets out fast enough. Nice. Well, sure. I mean, if, if one pick lasts you for four years, I mean... You know, if you buy 16, you're, you'll die with them. Right. Put them in the coffin. You know. <laughs> I, I have people that'll call me up and they'll buy a couple, three dozen of them, and, and uh, they'll say, yep, this is my lifetime supply. Wow. Wow. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, usually cool. their friends steal them or they give them to their friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's something nice to give to your friends, too. It's like, you got to check this out. You know, you got to yeah, check this out. And, and you know, uh, Christmas is coming, man. And you know, hey, there you if, if there's any, coming, baby. if there's right. any wives out there that are listening for some strange reason, mm -hmm. they just decide to tune in our podcast. Uh, you know, that'd be a great gift. You, you should buy your husband all 100 styles that he makes, exactly. so he can figure out the one that he wants the most. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is exactly. And we got our, we got the perfect uh, package on our website. It's called the Starter Kit. It's seven of our most popular models. Oh, nice! Yeah, and, I, I saw that. Really yeah. attractively priced. It's nineteen ninety five for seven picks. That's less than three dollars a pick. That's and, awesome. Um, That's great. Yeah, uh, it's to get people started. 
And um, so that's a good thing to buy. And I'm very proud to say this. Sam Ash is going to be carrying our picks very, very soon. So you can nice. look for them hanging on the wall with Jim Dunlop's picks. And ours will be in a very attractive uh, packaging. It says V picks on it. And um, 10 of our most popular models there. So. Wow. That'll make good Christmas gifts, yeah. That's yeah. nice. Now, I mean, and, you know, if someone that gets the uh, the the, the uh, variety pack and goes through all those picks and goes, yeah, it's almost there, but I, it just, if it was this, if there was something different about it and in this way, I would really, really love this pick forever. Can they call you up and go, Vinny, I got this pick here, and it's it's this model, but I want it to be just like this. There's probably 93 other models, yes. and there's another one that's going to fit yeah. the bill. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, very... I don't, I don't call myself a custom pick maker because that that can drive you crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. That'll that'll just about make you lose your religion right there. Um, but I, but I have, like you say, over a hundred models, and if I don't have it, you don't really need to be playing it. <laughs> Let's <laughs> just, just be honest about it, you know? Yeah. Uh, if he doesn't have it, it's because you're a saxophone player. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're a saxophone player. That's right. uh, well, I tell you what, Vinny, you are, it's, it's so cool to hear this because, you know, he takes the time. It, yeah. It's sort of like picks have kind of become one of those things that they just kind of stamp them out and there they are. Vinny, like like our buddy Dean, yeah, has taken the time, kind of figured it out here, and now gives you a hundred options. Right. I mean, it's and he's he's got the knowledge from all these years of something that just organically developed yeah. into, you know, the the company that it is today that you know offers an insane amount of selection for people, and you know, it, people a lot of people, I mean, me included, mm -hmm. never really thought enough about. A pick. I mean, a pick is a pick, and you know, you used to be a kid. You go grab the three for a quarter in the in the bin, and it's you made. pick up, you know, the the pack of strings that's on sale, and you played your guitar. But you know, there are so many more aspects about it now that people are starting to think about and really focus on. Well, this is actually changing my tone a yeah. little bit here, and this is changing my tone here, and this is more comfortable, and this really lasts. And you know, there's so many more variables, and he's sure. just another one of those guys that's a big part of that. Yeah. That's you know, awesome, man. Yeah. So hats off to you, Vinny. <laughs> yeah. You know, you said something about a pick as a pick it reminds me first time. You know who Phil Keggy is? Sure. Yeah. One of the first times Phil ever played my pick, we were standing there and he's playing it. He's a friend of mine now. And uh, he says, he looks up at me and he goes, you know, Vinny, a pick is a pick, <laughs> but this thing's different. Wow. That's exactly cool exactly what he said that's just that's what you just said yeah. and uh phil i got i think i quoted phil on the website him saying that too nice. you know Vinny, a pick is just a pick but man this thing is different he said and now he was playing my little tradition light blue so mm -hmm. we made uh we made him picks and he plays uh the tradition light i made him in green for him because he wanted green and he also <laughs> he sells them on his merch tables now Oh, nice. Okay, that is so, so cool. Phil Kagey. Phil Kagey. Phil Kagey sells them on his merch tables, and I'm very proud to say that Carlos, you know, Carlos Santana plays my picks. He was my first artist, and... Um, that guy's like the, the first the, artist for everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he seems to be, doesn't he? Yeah. And, um, he starts entire companies. Funny, funny story when I met him, but uh, he actually sells my picks on his website, too. Yeah. For a lot more money than I do, too, though, jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Now is is his still the size of a Dorito? <laughs> he uses uh, the He still he still plays the Dorito too. He doesn't only play my pick. Um I when exactly he plays mine I'm not really sure. Oh, so you didn't you um, didn't make one like that for him. No, no, oh, okay. no, I don't I don't like doing that. Um <laughs> Wow. No, I, I I made this one and for some reason I just thought to myself that's cuz you know he Carlos plays with four fingers on his pick. He plays with his thumb, his index, middle, and ring finger mm -hmm. all on the pick. Yeah, that's how Carl, I don't even. I don't. I ask him how he plays that. He just laughs. He just laughs every time I ask him a question. That's why you get out of Carlos, and he just laughs. And anyway, this this guy calls me up one time, and he said, "Yeah, my name's Dave, and I want to buy some picks from you." And I said, "Okay." And and he said, "And if you'll if you'll put, I have a friend named Carlos Santana." 
and if you put some some extra picks in there, I'll give them to him. I mean, this guy sounded like he was a president of the Hayman Society, you know. And <laughs> I, I said, I said, wait a minute. How about I, I, he just kind of irritated me when the guy said that on the phone. I said, I'll tell you what, pal. How about if I just give you, you send you your picks for free? Because I figured he was just blowing wind up my skirt. And he says, no, no, man, I'm telling you, I got a friend named Carlos Santana, and, and I want him to turn him on to your picks. I said, okay, I'll, I'll pitch you in a couple of extra ones for Carlos. So I did, and one of them was the pick that I always had the dream that Carlos would play my pick. Wow. And about two weeks later, I get a phone call. My daughter picked up the phone. This is Chad. I'm standing here with Carlos Santana. Can we speak with Vinny Smith, please? Can you believe? Can you believe that? Wow, that is wow. cool. Yeah, I mean, just about the time when you blow somebody off, when you think that they're, uh, you know, BS and pulling you, right. shit, pulling right. your thing. That, that's about the time that that's where your big break comes, you know. That so I just about cool. blew that one, but I didn't. And now, now <laughs> me and Dave we're we're good friends. The guy that, as a matter of fact, I send Dave his picks for free all the time. The guy that turned Carlos, I I always send him a lot of picks for free. And, and uh, I'm sure he's turning other people onto them too. Yeah. You know? Oh, oh, absolutely. Sure. And he's a great guitar player. He's got a guitar that Carlos gave him about a twenty thousand uh, dollar PRS with a Brazilian rosewood neck and everything that Carlos gave him. Wow. And uh, and he plays that with pride, as you could very well guess. And, I'm sure. Um, he's a good guy. Awesome, awesome stuff, that, man. That's fantastic. You, you know, you never know. You never know what the next phone call is going to be or where it's going to lead. Exactly. You, know? you just never know. You, you really don't. It's like when I met Billy, this guy calls up. He goes, I'm, um, this is Tim, and I'm sitting here with Billy Gibbons, and we want to come to your house. And I said, <laughs> what? And he goes, and he said, this is Tim. He told the whole thing. So I told my daughter, I said, well, somebody's probably yanking my chain, but Billy, there's a 50% chance Billy Gibbons is coming over today. She goes, okay. She works with me. That's why. And, and I, she goes, okay. So I am thinking, I just figured somebody, you know, yeah. messing with me. And, yeah. and about 45 minutes later, he, the guy calls again. He goes, hey, this is Tim again, and we're just leaving Guitar Center. And, and I said, who is this? That's what I said on the phone. I go, who is this? And he told me the whole thing. I'm sitting here with Billy Gibbons. And nah, 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 nah. yeah, yeah. So I told my daughter, I said, well, if you can push that up to about maybe 75%. Chance Billy's coming over. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen minutes later, there's Billy out there at my front gate. I look out and he's trying to figure out how to get in my gate because that my gate opener is what let him in. There he is, beard, that stupid hat, and everything. <laughs> <laughs> it and is him. Fast, fast friends. We were oh. Immediately became friends. That's that awesome. That's just the That's coolest fantastic. story. Yeah, that is great. Well, well, and you know what? I the one of the things that really attracts me to these is uh, the ones like the Dimensions Ghost Rim Smoky Mountain. Hmm. Um, That's a fantastic pick. From far away, though, that thing has the look of the Lamborghini uh, type of logo, almost. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah, it yeah. just has that shape. You know, Lamborghini has, and I'm a big. I love Lamborghini. So oh. I just when I saw that, really? I was like, that is so cool. It it draws you right to it. Wow, because they're they're symbols more of a almost a, a, a like not a triangle but in that kind mm -hmm. of sense yeah. you know and uh, th this has that on there and it's so cool looking to me I just like well that's gonna have to be your pick yeah forever I'm have and to ever buy now. one of those picks that's right that's that's, right. A, that's a really really popular model and again it's 4.0 which I think is the perfect thickness and that pick was designed with me by a guy named Muddy Lawrence Muddy Lawrence was in line to get Eric Clapton's job in Cream. And then wow. <laughs> when it came time to replace Eric, Bruce, Jack Bruce gave the job to a uh, blue Saraceno. He was wow. another good friend of mine, but yeah. he didn't belong in that. He didn't belong in that band. He, he belonged in a different band. Uh, but so Muddy kind of got beat out of that job. Muddy's a great guitar player. And he, um, we, he, he designed that pick with me huh. and that thing is fantastic. You play with the point. It's a really articulate, fast, screaming fast pick and your fingers are nice and open because of the four four millimeter thickness it's and then if you want to flip it around and use the upper corner yeah it's I've more designed, rounded designed upper corners they are they're perfect for playing rhythm or just to fatten up your lead tone to give you more mid-range and then and then the, cool. the ghost rim on top of that just 
just pushes that pick over the top. That's that, awesome. It, it is a very, it's like, it's, you know, it's got this darker insert with the outer edges are white. Cool. You know, to, cool. to give it that, yeah. it, of that the, ghost. Yeah. The, the ghost rim. Yeah. It's yeah, really nice. cool. It's cool, cool looking pick, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, this thing is, it's pretty neat. And yeah. it's four millimeters thick. That's crazy. <laughs> that is it. I can't. I can't imagine. I, I'm. I, you know, like I said, usually I play with a, a 1.14. You know, and I'm sorry. Well, that's probably well, here, a, that's probably a girly pick a little, too. I guess. <laughs> that's a girl. So here's a little experiment. That's a girl's pick. <laughs> hold your hold your hand up. I can't see you there, but hold okay. your hand up and and barely, barely, barely put your index finger and your thumb finger together. Just okay. barely touch them. Okay. Okay. Now. Mm-hmm. Relax your hand and let those fingers go wherever they're going to go. Oh, damn. That's See pr- how far apart they yeah. are? Wow. They're, four, they're almost exactly four millimeters apart. Now, tell me how you want your finger. You'd like to hold your fingers for the next four hours. You want to barely touch your fingers together or do you Makes want sense. it in a relaxed state? Wow. Yeah, how did you, I mean, how you're, did he come up with you know, it, I mean, with that thought in mind, you're squeezing your fingers into an unnatural position for Absolutely. hours. Well, imagine, play. imagine too, if you got like rheumatoid, uh, what, rheuma, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. arthritis? Yeah. 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 I can't speak. I and a lot of people do. My daughter, ha- I have it. I, we, we did that. You suffer from that. And little things like that make a big difference. Not just people with, like that. People that, that, I mean, I have kids come up to me that are playing six hours a day and they go, man, my, my wrist hurts all the time. I go, well, you keep that up, bro, and you're not going to be playing when you're 45. You know, you're going to be playing a freaking tuba. The, and, the, the, yeah, so, <laughs> that's probably. Uh, I mean, that's probably the the onset of, of carpal tunnel. Or yeah, something like exactly that. what it is. Yeah. And so if you can relax that hand, it really, really helps. And a lot of people come up to me with hand injuries. They <clears> write <throat> me. They call me. I get all the time. And you, you can look on the website. There's a lot of testimonies from people that say, hey, I had carpal tunnel real bad. Doctor told me to knock it off. I'm playing your picks, and it never bothers me anymore. So, wow. I'm not saying that they're a miracle cure, but they sure do help. And I'm almost 60 years old now. And one thing I don't have problems with is my wrist, elbows, or fingers. Nice. I have problems with me. <laughs> you got to see my face. You want to see a problem? But <laughs> Problems everywhere else, but I don't have problems in my hands or arms. Well, you, you don't you don't have a problem with the sense of humor either. <laughs> no, Vinny's got a great sense of humor. That's right. No problem with the sense of humor. That's, that's, the, that's the Italian in me. That's there. You go. Right. Well, awesome. I want to I want to tell Vinny, Vinny, we've had your website up uh, your your uh, link on our page since day one, which is of January of 2014, um, because uh, Jeff turned me on to your picks. And uh, cool. and I said, you know what? I'm just we're gonna we'll put it out put it there, up there, yes. Because we put at, we put all of our guests out there, and I've been saying for months we got to get Vinny. I tried calling a couple times, and I guess I never got through. And and just the other day he answered, and here we are. Here we are. And, and what an awesome dude, and an awesome thing, man. Yeah. I mean, this is a, uh, you know, this is kind of yep. one of those things that people don't think about. Hopefully, now we're gonna educate them. And hopefully turn them on to this stuff, man, because this is definitely uh, like one of those pieces that everybody should pay attention to. Yeah, and, ho- and, and he's, he's, he's doing people a service that I mean, we just fig- we just figured that out a minute ago. He's actually doing people a service <laughs> yes. that no one ever thought of before, no one ever thought about before. No. And maybe because of it, a few more people can continue playing guitar. Yeah. I mean, what a freaking great thing that is. I know. You now, know? if he can only make a neck for my left hand, maybe I can actually play. <laughs> 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 that, that's awesome, man. That, this is great. A great interview, Vinny. And th- I mean, thank you yes, so man. much for taking the time. It was um, educational, insightful, uh, yeah. and and um, and funny. And we so, got <laughs> and, and if there's anything that we ever get close to him, we got we got to meet up with him. Man. Oh yeah, for sure. We, I mean, oh yeah, you, you got to come by Nashville sometime. Yeah, we yeah. yeah we did. There's a few reasons we have to go there. Yes, so, there is. Yeah, there are. Yeah. So it seems yeah, to be one, re- one reason is the time jumpers. You got to see the time jumpers when you're here. Oh yeah, yeah. Vince Gill's in the time jumpers, and he's one of the less talented members. Let me oh tell you that. Oh my god! Whoa! <laughs> yeah, what can't that guy play? I love Vince Gill's playing. He, he, I he, love his playing. he joined the time jumpers to learn. He said, "Wow, <laughs> so who's that's in that how band?" Good they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Gonna have to that's look them up. Yeah. Gonna have bunch to look of, them a bunch up. of old men. Yeah, you know. <laughs> that, that's when you get good. <laughs> that's when you get good. That's uh, what the kid asked Mr. Al. <laughs> Mr. Al. <laughs> Too funny. Well, All right. Well, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's. The, I think we've learned a whole lot about uh, the plectrum. And my, my face is hurting from laughing. And that too. That's awesome. And that too. Vinny, once again, thank you very yeah, much. Um, thanks for taking the time. Have a great evening. Much continued success in your business. And uh, I'm going to be looking at a couple of things like yeah. that, uh, like that green pick and, and the and slide. I'm yeah. going to check these out. Absolutely. So it sounds like it sounds yeah. like a couple of great things to check out. So I, I will do that. So okay. Thank you very much, my friend. Have a great rest of the evening and much continued success. Thank you. I appreciate it. You guys be good. You too. We try. Thanks. So there's the story. <laughs> man, you know? I tell you what, man. Whew. He's um, he can make you laugh. He's a funny guy, man. He's a funny guy, and he's got a great sense of humor. He does, and it just <clears throat> you know, I. I'm sure it's probably like a lot of people and maybe even a little like me. It's like, I just started doing this because I wanted something that I wanted. <laughs> well, the thing that got me was, it's like, so I met Robin Ford. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're friends. Mm-hmm. I'm like. Billy Gibbons couldn't open my gate. Yeah. Uh, so Billy came over. <laughs> now we're friends, but he wore that stupid hat. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that was funny. Oh my God. You know, I mean, it's just, uh, that is just so awesome. You know, it's, it's life. It's, it's, it's life, you know? And yeah. we're, I guess, at least I am, hopefully you are happy living it, you know? And so is he, I, you know, you know there, there's stuff happens and it's great stuff. I have those days like everybody else. And I'm almost positive, but every time that we come in here and fire these mics up and talk to another cool dude, it makes me go, man, I'm so glad that I'm li- I lived when I did and I'm living now. Um, yeah. Kind of wish that I could have pushed it back 20 years, <laughs> maybe 30. I just would have loved it. When I figure out my way back machine. Oh, absolutely. I'll grab you. We'll go back. Yeah. yeah. Shake Hendri- hands with Hendrix. Oh, for sure. Tell him lay off the heroin. <laughs> you know, uh, things like that. Maybe stop Stevie. Hey, Stevie. Yeah. yeah just wait for the next helicopter. You got a second? <laughs> I got the car right here. I can drive you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, things like that. But yeah, for sure. you know, uh, yeah, I just, um, I, I, I dig that we get to meet these awesome guys and that there's still guys out there trying to think about those things. Nobody who thinks about picks, man. Right. Right. And, and the, and the aspect of it about, you know, put your fingers together and now let it, let them relax. Yeah. Wow. Never thought of that. Never. I would look at four millimeters and, and probably be like, I'm not going to touch it. Right. It's This has to be for like Andre the Giant or something. Yeah, you know? something ridiculous. It, yeah. But now I got to buy one. <laughs> I got to try it out. I cannot mm. let it go. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, what if this is something that I've really needed for a bunch of years? Exactly. You know how exactly. much that's going to suck? <laughs> <laughs> Better late than never, my well, friend. Well, that's true. Better late than that, never. That is true. I will take it for that reason. That's right. You know and I got to check out one of the slides. Not that I'm, uh, I've just begun to play slide. Oh, and the, and the I'm one like that, Vinny, people walk away. The one that just I actually stop. use, the one, the only one that I can kind of get to not sound like uh, an injured cat <laughs> is, 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 is the, uh, it's the Dunlop 234. And it's actually a tapered slide really is it yeah. glass yeah it's glass oh okay it's glass i i don't know if if uh Vinny makes a, a tapered one yet i, I, I we'll have to ask look him. we we i think there was some different things on there okay well i'll have to take a look but that's the only one that i can the angle seems right now for real me. real quick and because uh, i know we gotta get out of here but real quick i had a glass slide yes i actually tried because uh, we did the stupid white snake song um uh whatever name of it is i don't even I know, don't know. Brown, now, now. I, I, I don't remember uh, anyway it was a big famous white snake song I'm that sure. they had forever well anyway that was all it was used for right mm-hmm. and i took it off and i missed the little holder uh, on the was, mic stand and it just shattered at my feet <laughs> and i was like well uh, that was 12 bucks you know so uh well, that, that won't happen with one of his exactly right so know that kids and, uh, you know, and, personally, I've tried the uh, the brass ones, and that really sounds like two injured cats. And so I, Billy you know, Gibbons, work for Billy me. Gibbons, I know he signed off on it. Yeah, Billy Gibbons. Yeah, right. I know he uses sevens, but it's Billy Gibbons. Well, we, hey, we've look, already had this conversation. Look, look <laughs> it, you know, with with, with carpal, the onset of carpal tunnel, you know, anybody should not hesitate looking towards eights or 
possibly sense. Exactly. But you know, um, yeah, what you do, what you got to do. You do what you got to do to to have fun and make the music that you want to make. So yes. hopefully everybody is going to is going to follow those rules and just just do what you got to do to make the, the sounds that you want to make out there. Have fun with it, man. Just yeah, have man. fun with it. So until next time, my friend. I am Mick, Mick Marcelino. Yes, you are. Hey. And I knew that. I was going to say You're that. Ready to do- I was going to, I was going to say that. And, <laughs> and, that, and, and, and that leave still you. leaves me as, as Jeff Bowman. Yeah. Uh, Godfather right. of low water camps. Too long. And, and we are saying. Onward. Be sure and follow the show on Twitter at Amps and Axis. Also, make sure you like the show on Facebook. For news, comments, and everything else, visit the webpage, AmpsAndAxisCast.com. Thanks for listening. I hate to tell you, but that picks for girls.